Hi, Jack Bennett here. Welcome to the lesson. In today's lesson, we're going to focus specifically on the hi-hat. And we're going to have a look at uh, hi-hat splashing and kicking. There's many, many different sounds we can get out of the hi-hat. Splashing, kicking, the hi-hat chick, the gliss, sizzle, uh, hi-hat barks, etc. And hi-hat technique is different to bass drum technique. So in today's lesson, we'll uh, start out by having a look at the hi-hat splash. This is where we play heel down and we raise the hi-hats about a centimetre and we quickly splash and release with the ball of the foot. So we're basically tapping the top hi-hat into the bottom one, it resonates and we let it back up again. If we just close it, that's the hi-hat chick, which you can either play heel down or heel up, but we're playing the hi-hat splash. Okay. So really, a lot of hi-hat technique, particularly if you're playing heel down, is controlled with the shin muscle. The muscle on the outside of the shin is the muscle that has to contract in order for the ball of the foot to come up when your heel is down. It's different if your heel is up, we use the muscles in the upper leg, but when the heel is planted on the ground, the muscle that contracts is the shin muscle, and so it's a very subtle movement as well. You don't want to let it necessarily come all the way back, depending on what you're doing. Sometimes, like when we're doing the hi-hat uh, sizzle, You might only want the hi-hats to come up a couple of millimetres, okay? So it's a very subtle uh, thing that you're controlling with your shin muscle. So that's the hi-hat splash. And you can use that in lots of different styles. You might be stirring away with brushes and you just want that nice sustained long sound. You could be doing a Latin American thing where you want more of a sort of a festive sound out of the hi-hats. Um, so you can think of it in that sense like uh, orchestral uh, hand crashes where you're, you know, playing two cymbals together. It's the same sort of thing, but you're doing it all with your left foot. So that's the hi-hat splash. If you want a similar sort of sound, but you want more attack on the front of the sound, you can do what we just call the hi-hat kick, which is kind of like a heel-toe technique. Now, if you look at the foot cam here, when I play this, It's really important that you play uh, a couple of things. First of all, that you play with your foot on a slight angle so that it can actually clear and not hit the chain on the hi-hat stand. Otherwise, you're really not going to get the heel at the bottom of the footboard, which is where you want it. You want the heel to land right there. Obviously, not here. Right at the bottom. If you go up too high with the heel, if you come up like that, you're just going to get another hi-hat chick sound, which is what you would normally get with the ball of the foot. So you, it's a really small movement. A lot of people, when they do this, they go way too far up. They do this kind of jig <laughs> with their left foot. Uh, it's really a small movement. So down the, at the base of the foot plate is where you're going to get the sound, and then to stop the sound, you just bring the ball of the foot back. Okay, like that. So you might use that in like a Latin setting. You can do it like, you could do some polyrhythmic stuff, you could do it in threes. You could do fives. You can, you can do whatever you like with it. Um, so that is the, uh, the hi-hat, I just call it the hi-hat kick. It's kind of like heel and toe technique. Um, once again, make sure that the heel doesn't go too far up, otherwise it's gonna be just hi-hat chick and another hi-hat chick. And not a very uh, good one at that. Okay, so that's the hi-hat splash, and then the heel-toe hi-hat kick.